Back here in Queens, John Shambi alongside Chris Singleton. Thanks for joining us. We're in the seventh with nobody out. Big matchup here with the top two teams in the division going head to head. Pressure on both teams in a game like this, Singy. Absolutely. If you're behind, you know you have a chance to make up some ground. You really want to get that W. Back here at the ballpark, James McCann in now. But for the team in front, they're feeling the heat a little bit, and they know their lead shrinks with the loss, so they got to be sharp every pitch. And yeah, the first offering is not close. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Will Smith, the lefty, looks to be getting himself ready. McHugh getting loose as well. Next offering is in for a strike. I wonder how much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will this claw back into this ball game. One ball, two straight. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. And McCann fouls it off. The wind of the pitch. Out to short. Whips it across. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. Up next to the net. The center fielder. So up next, Brandon, Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. He swings and misses at the first pitch, 0-1. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Pitch is in for a strike. That's strike two. Swings and misses at the breaking ball in the dirt. To first, but it pulls him off the bag. The right fielder, number six, Starling. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Max Breed will give way, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Henley Jansen into the game. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Now one down. Starling Marte up to him. Well, a pretty good speed over there at first base. I think the pitcher's got to slow everything down. Hold the ball a little bit, step off, just try to break the rhythm and timing of a potential base dealer. And a foul ball. And the righty deals. It really feels like we might be running out of time before a rain delay is called. This rain is not letting up. Yeah, and if we do get a delay, the unfortunate thing is the clock's going to start ticking on these pitchers, and they won't be able to keep their arms warm forever if it's a long break and going to have to exit this game a little early. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, try to stay out of a double play here. Next pitch just misses. Three and two now. Your base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Rudder goes again. Stays alive. Payoff pitch. Downstairs and it misses ball four. Now up to him, 
Francisco Lindor for the fourth time tonight. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. And a pitch. That one missed. The 1 0. That misses the zone, and the count is 2 0. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. The 2 0 is in for a strike. The fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. The 2 1. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. Rip to right, base hit. Runner around third. Head for a slide, and he's safe. His confidence level is so high. Really nice job of coming through in a big spot. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front, lifted into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Here's Pete Alonso. Jansen back to work. Good eye in that spot. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Oh, and this one gets away. Tag, and he's out at the play. And he's in to score position with two gone on the wild pitch. Two down, go ahead, run at scoring position. He gets the attention to walk here and now will force it any base with two gone. Tyler Matzik will take over on the mound. He's pitching on two days rest. How big a deal is that walk? I don't think it's a big deal because if you pitch to the previous hitter with the power he has, he can hit a home run. I think it was a calculated walk. We'll see how it pays off here. And he deals. Smith in the box now. Takes a cold strike. See the velocity 97 with that fastball. Left hand batter waits. And the pitch is outside. Ball one. 0 2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him off. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Runner edges away at second. On the ground to the left. They get the force. And that will end the inning. So one run in the inning on this base hit. All even now at four piece. We're at the top of the eight. Dansby Swanson stands in. Swanson, former first round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Vanderbilt player in college, college World Series player, all that good stuff. But... Really coming into his own. Bounce to the left side. And that one finds its way through. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock. And you'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Well, no surprise with this decision to delay the game. The rain is here, and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. And we're going to have to sit tight, Chris. Yeah, Pogue, I don't see a break in the storm coming anytime soon, and I've got my 499 weather app, which is pretty trusty, and the radar says it's going to stay this way for at least another hour. So if that's the case, get ready for some new pitchers to take the mound when we get back. We welcome you back with good news. The tarp is off the field, and it's done raining here at the ballpark, so we can get back to action. Trevor May comes into the game after about an hour-long delay, and we're all ready to get it going again. Dickerson in the box now. Takes a cold strike. Line and a base hit into right. Coming home. 
He will score, and the Braves take the lead. It's 5-4, and he's in at third with an RBI triple. Now batting, catcher, Travis Garner. And now it's Travis Darno with the play and the pitch. And a foul ball. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners if they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. Dickerson at third with nobody out. Swings and misses and one gone. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so. In an 0-2 count, you feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. Rosario stands in now and lets that one go for a strike. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it, so it's a good take by him. The one two the punch out there that's his second strikeout big strikeout right there and that kind of takes the pressure off the defense a bit infield was in so now they can move back give themselves more time on a grounder to make a play a lot more ways to work out of this and strand that runner at third now Ozzy Albies next up for the Braves this guy has turned into a beast runner at third two away Next pitch misses, and that's ball one. Just missed with that backdoor breaking ball. If he gets a swing and miss or called strike, 0-2 count. Instead, it's 1-1. Look for him to go back to that pitch later in this at bat. Next offering upstairs. He really committed to that fastball up at the top of the zone. He does. And he got him. Strike three, and that'll retire the side. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the break. On to the bottom of the eighth. Down the third baseman, Luis Guillorme. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Movement in the Atlanta bullpen. Will Smith getting ready to come in for manager Brian Snicker. Minter getting cranked up as well. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side, same side he throws from. And the next pitch is way outside. Hit hard, should be extra bases. Digging it out of the corner. Now he turns and heads for second. The throw to second is offline. Oh, this has been anything but a clean game for these guys defensively. That's their third error, but somehow they still have the lead. Even if they do get the W in this one, I'm sure there's going to be some early work tomorrow trying to clean things up a little bit. Now it's J.D. Davis. And the pitch. Line drive. Reaching for it, makes the catch. And he's in safely at third with one out. Man, he smoked that fastball. He's all over it. It's just frustrating when you can't get it to fall. Maybe next time off, he'll find a hole. Jeff McNeil stands in. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. Substitution now at third. Mets going with a pinch runner. Eduardo Escobar. Here's the sack fly situation, and he's got to make sure he gets the ball out over the plate and get those arms extended. They're trying to crowd him with the infield in. Be a big pickoff if he can push a run across. And first offering is fouled off. And I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. The pitch. And a curve drops in for a strike. Well, a good breaking ball like that can buckle the hitter, and by the time you realize it's going to be in the strike zone, it's too late to pull the trigger. The 0-2. 
This one in the dirt. Runner stays put at third. And now it's one and two. That misses the zone. Two and two. Great job of laying off those pitches down in the zone to even the count off at two and two. Such a better feeling for the hitter. And now the lefty. Strike three. Got him swinging. Huge strike out there. Well, tough night at the dish. Punching out for the third time right there. He just hasn't looked very comfortable with the plate. A little unsure of his timing right now. Not picking up the spin and location of these pitches. We'll have some adjustments to make. Here comes a new arm for the Braves. Colin McHugh. And he'll work on holding this lead. And now the catcher comes up to him. James McCann. The pitch. There's the strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Very solid inning on the mound so far here in the eighth. Holding on to this narrow lead. This is exactly what they were looking for. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Out to short. Swanson picks it up. Tosses across the first. And that is the inning. Mets leave one. Still down a run. It's five to four. Eduardo Escobar now in the game as he takes over third. And welcome back. New inning getting started. Now here is Matt Olson. May back to work. There's the strike of the knees. Strike one. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. And the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Now one gone in the ninth. Here's Marcelo Zuna. And the right-hander back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Right-hander kicks deals. And there's a foul ball. One down, base is empty. That one fouled off. And here it comes. Got him. Two quick outs here in the top of the ninth. Running out of chances to pad the lead. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Right. Stands in now, looks at that one inside. Next offering is in for a strike. Not looking like they'll be adding any insurance runs heading to the bottom of the ninth, so it's going to be on the bullpen to hold this lead. In the air, and that one off first. Alonso racing over to make the catch. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order, do up. It's the Braves five and the Mets four. So bottom of the ninth, digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Brandon Nimmo. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. But why to kick the pitch? And there's a ball. Now, Boog, this is a real tough place for visiting teams to come in and close out ball games for a win. The next offering misses. And yeah, that's ball two. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. The 2-0 is in for a strike. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. The next pitch misses. Three and one. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. Well, that right there could end up being a big walk in this game. He's certainly a threat on the bases, especially with them looking to tie this thing up. So digging in, Starling Marte, the right-hander, back to work. And the slider catches the zone. Some guys are just more confident they can track that first pitch out of the hand of the pitcher. They don't care if they fall behind 0-1. Next offering is down low. And the count is 1-1. One one. And 
and a swing and a miss. And one out now. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. Francisco. Lindor. And now it's Frankie Lindor. The pitch. Bounced up the middle. Into the outfield base hit. Throw comes in quickly, and the tying run forced to hold on at third with one away. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch, just shot it through the infield. And now a crucial opportunity to tie up this game with another base hit. Here in the bottom of the ninth, one out. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. First pitch, just misses. Two on, one out. And that's downed away. That one missed, now three and oh. So he can move the ball around, add and subtract, get some weak contact at times. So you don't worry as much about him in this situation. Very capable of getting the ground ball and getting out of this little jam. In for a strike, now three and one. Big spot, tying and winning runs aboard with one down. Fouls one away, and now three and two. This to third, and a base hit knocks in a run. The tying run is in to score, and we are starting over. It's 5-5. Just a huge at bat right there. Just one of those seen high base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. Well, here's Darren O'Day to take over for the Braves. Right-hander who throws from the side, really almost down under. He last pitched four days ago, so he should feel pretty fresh. So up next for New York, Dominic Smith. And a pitch. And that's in for a strike. Righty delivers. Strike two. Sometimes being lucky is a swing and miss. If he makes contact with that pitch, probably hits into a double play. And he'll two. And a swing and a miss. Two gone now. So first and second with two outs. Eduardo Escobar digs in now. Here comes a pitch. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. Brings it in. And that's the inning. So they pick up one run on the RBI single. All even at five apiece. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen. Hasn't pitched in the last three days. We're in extras here. So now to the plate for Atlanta. Adam Duvall. Man at second, nobody out. Chris, certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. Next pitch downstairs, and the count is one and two. Next offering misses, and it's two and two. Two two down. In the air, out towards left center. 
And he makes it up to third with one away. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfect. Two on, one out. And next is the designated hitter, Alex Dickerson. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion, and he's in full speed. All tied up here in extra innings. Next offering is fouled back. Well, it's kind of deflating. You blow that lead in the bottom of the ninth. So here's a new opportunity. Hit the reset button. Try to get some more runs Three. and then close it out in the bottom half of this one. Got him. Two gone. Just locked him up right there for the second out. And that's the bat he's probably going to be thinking about for a little while. Didn't pull the trigger. Not how you want to go down in an RBI spot. So now you got to hope your teammate behind you can pick you up. Travis Dardo next up for the Braves. And he deals. And that one fouled off. Riley, the runner at third. Swanson on at first with two down. Next pitch in the dirt. And that's ball one. Next one misses. The count now two and two. Right into the plate. And a swing and a miss. Out number three. Sometimes he wears the emotion on the sleeve, but that's okay as long as he's getting results. And right there, thrilled with the punch out to get out of a jam. Welcome back. Now it's the DH. J.D. Davis. Leading off. Welcome back. So the David hitter. J.D. Davis. And the pitch. Just oh, missed. The Braves bullpen has some activity. A.J. Minter getting ready to come in for manager Brian Snicker. Jackson warming up as well. And the 1-0. Trying to move him over here. And he picks it up in foul territory. The 1-1. One, one. Good eye right there. The 2-1. In the air right side of the infield. Makes a nice run and catch. And there's one down. The batter, number one. And now Second here's Jeff base McNeil. Base. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on, have the force at second first, perhaps getting any ending double play. That one's in there, 0 and 1. There it was, 0 0. Here it is, hit it. He gets a take, gets ahead in the count. Runner leads away at second. Get a little frustrated with the strike zone. The winning run on second base. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Winning run stands at second. to right and he's up to third safely with two gone maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it here's the catcher for the Mets James McCann this is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation 
Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at-bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. First pitch, and he just misses. Next one is off the play. Two balls, no strikes. Kicks and deals. And that's in for a strike. Winning run at third, two down. Olsen makes the catch, and that'll do it. Mets strand one, and this remains a 5-5 ball game. He thought he was going to be able to do more with that pitch. A run-scoring opportunity, but a weak pop-up. Frustrated. Back here at City Field. Now we go to the 11th. Here's Eddie Rosario. He's no RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. Next offering is foul back. Man at second. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The next offering misses. One and two to count. Next pitch has popped up. The throw wide at first, and both runners are safe. The batter number one, second baseman, Ozzie. Here is Ozzie Albies up to hit. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. First offering, and it just misses. All tied up. We are in the 11th. And a count one and two. Right-handed reliever. That's where you want. It's a good miss. And the righty deals. Got him, looking. What out. So up next, Matt Olson. Well, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. The pitch. Ball one there. Hammered down the right side, but foul. Kicks and fires. Gets the slider in there for a strike. Man, 91 on the slider right there. That's a hard one. That's a low end fastball for some guys. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Back to back strikeouts. Nice work there to get the strikeout, and that's a big second out. I'll tell you, this whole crowd will be fired up and they can get out of this and leave that go ahead run stranded in scoring position. This is a big moment in this game. So, first and second with two outs. Digging in, Marcelo Zuna. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Two on, two outs. Fouled off. He was late. All tied up and here in extra innings. Next offering is fouled back. At the belt and fires. Just misses the mark outside the zone. That's a really good take. Stays alive. First and second, two down. Got him! They miss a big chance to take the lead here late. Two left for Atlanta. Our score holds at five apiece. So Luke Jackson gets the call. Now pitching for Atlanta, number 77, Luke 
All set for the bottom of the 11th. Here's the Mets' leadoff man, Brandon Nimmo. Listen, there's absolutely no reason to pitch to this guy right here. You nibble, you see if he'll expand his zone, but don't give him anything to hit. You walk him, not a big deal. You have a double play opportunity set up. And here it comes. There's a strike. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but left the bat on his shoulder. The pitch. And it's even up. And the pitch. Bunting, and he pops it up. Riley makes the play, and there's one down. To second with the throw, and no chance to get back. It's a double play. Now it's the right fielder, Starling Marte. The wind of the pitch. And a big swing and a miss. Wouldn't chase that time. Two down, nobody on. So now one and two. Clearly he was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Albies handles. Albies over to first in time. Marte retired. Inning over. Jordan Yamamoto gets the call from the pen. Hasn't pitched in a while. He's had the last five days off. Back here at the ballpark, onto the 12th. Here's the third baseman, Austin Riley. That's in for a strike. Next pitch is outside, and it's one and one. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. Squirts away a little bit, and an excellent job keeping it right there. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes, and there's one away here in the 12th. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Adam Duvall at the play. First offering misses badly for ball one. Starting to get some pretty good timing on that breaking ball, but he's going to have to stay ready for a fastball. Don't want to watch one go right by you. That one pushed foul. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Now, Blue, it becomes pretty difficult as a teammate when a guy's struggling like this. You don't know if you want to go up and tell him to keep swinging it or if you want to give him his space, what exactly he needs. But right now, it's clearly a struggle for him, and you're just hoping that somehow, some way, it'll click and he can get out of this as quickly as possible. Fought off foul. All tied up here in extra innings. pitch just off the outside edge now one and two one two now and a foul ball he stays alive And down on strikes he goes. The big righty strikes out the side. Brave strand one. This ball game still tied five all. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now here is Francisco Lindor. No matter what, you're playing this kind of rival. Take your game to another level. And a pitch. That one's in there, and that's strike one. Yeah, Brug, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. 
swing and a line drive base hit out of the center field. The winning run crosses the plate and the Mets win it in 12. You know, he had to feel the pressure. Winning run on second base. Found a way to make solid contact. And the winning run comes across to score. Everyone going crazy. Exciting finish to this game today. Singy, do you think games against division rivals mean more to the players than other games? I mean, I always got a little more charged up for those games in the division. And sure, you want to win every game all season long, but every player knows that a division title, that can really set you up for success in the postseason. So these divisional rivalry games can definitely feel more impactful for sure, both in the standings and on team morale. Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. We've got a perfect night for baseball on the show. It's the Cincinnati Reds going up against the New York Mets. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chambi. Francisco Alvarez finds himself at the lineup after his promotion. What a youth move in for them this season, Singy. Two major call-ups already, and today they make it three. More and more, Boog. We're seeing franchises rely heavily on their young assets like this, right? Get the most out of them as you possibly can. And while they might not have as much experience, sometimes that can actually help because they don't know enough to get overwhelmed by the moment out there and have fun so I'm looking forward to seeing what this guy can do in this one now it's Nick Senzel Senzel having more success against left-handed pitching this season as might be expected the pitch the swing and a soft liner and that one gets down fair ball throw comes in runner stopped second and third nobody out Hey, whatever works, right? Doesn't have to be impressive. When you pop a ball up like that, you don't expect it to get you a knock too often. But right there, somehow he got it to drop in behind first base, and that's where no one could get to it. Base is empty one away. And here's the rookie catcher, Francisco Alvarez. And there's one thing on his mind this at bat. Get that first hit at the big league level. Next offering is down low. 1-0. Next offering is in for a strike. Our plate umpire, Earl Hendricks. Yeah, with Hendricks, boo, kind of interesting. He's a good, consistent umpire, but you do hear that he kind of favors one side of the plate more than the other. So it's really hard to know for sure, but I think that usually it has to do something with where he sets up prior to each pitch. Next offering misses, and the count is two and two. What about some no-nos? Like, you can't call the umpire blue the way you do in Little League or high school, right? <laughs> yeah. Even in the minor leagues, you'll learn quickly. Uh, you call the umpire blue. You better learn his name. And uh, that's just part of being a professional player. And even... Runner at first with two away. Mike Moustakis, the next to hit for the Reds. And now the 1 Here's the pitch. Runner on the goal. That's in for a strike. No balls. The tag, and that's out number three, inning over. Well, trying to get in the scoring position, but a great catch and throw to end the inning. That's the way to pick up the pitcher. Now the number two hitter, Nick Senzel. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. Yeah, the right-hander back to work. 
Swings through that one oh, for one. strike one. He's been great in this one. Eye-hand coordination just failed him a little bit right there. McGill over to first. Pham back to first safely. Pham leads off first with one away. Next offering is down low. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Next offering is in for a strike. And the right-hander deals. Ground ball left side could be two. One at second. And it's a double play to end the inning. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Mets four and the Reds two. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. Gutierrez back to work. Oh, Boog, after watching the first inning of this one, you would not have expected that this pitcher would be in such a groove and still in the ball game at this point. Next pitch misses, and that is ball one. Slapped foul. The wide to kick the pitch. And that chance handled. Sends it to first. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. And here's the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. Well, the way these two teams have battled in this game, you know you need more. Got to continue to add runs if you're going to get out of here with a win. First pitch, not close. Well, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. Yeah. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. One and two. One and two. Just a really nice slider down and in there. He wants to get the hitter thinking fastball, speed him up, and just subtract some velocity and add a little movement. Two outs. Got him looking. Good job of damage control right there. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Mets five and the Reds two. And now the catcher comes up to him. Francisco Alvarez. The catcher. Moretta back to work. Here's the tapper out in front of the plate. On to first. Inning over. Although plenty of damage done. Nine men come to the plate. Four score. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mets nine and the Reds two. So the New York Mets got an inauspicious debut from their recently promoted prospect at Singy. He looked a bit lost at the plate today. Yeah, and I think when you call up a prospect midseason like this, you expect to see some growing pains, but I still got to think they were hoping for a little bit more than what we've seen. But the good news is he didn't come up to ride the pine, so he's going to have plenty of chances to make an impact for this team. Welcome from the home of the New York Mets, City Field in Queens. The show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Philadelphia Phillies going up against the New York Mets. With my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Chambi. 
Well, time for our player spotlight singing. Pete Alonso, very important to this team's success. Well, I think that might be an understatement, Boog. I mean, this guy brings so much talent to the table, and his success is absolutely essential to this team. So if they're able to make a run this season, I think he's going to have to have a lot to do with it. It's hard to imagine it any other way. Here's Pete Alonso. Alonso having a huge season comes into the day leading the league in two of the three triple crown categories the right hander back to work and that's in for a strike nice warm day here good baseball weather does that change anything Chris especially for the hitters absolutely you feel so much more comfortable at the plate you're not worried about you know, getting jammed on fastballs inside part of the plate uh, you can kind of be more selective instead of just looking out away so that you can get the barrel to it in that part and get on the inside part of the plate as well. That one ripped left field on its way. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. Pete Alonso takes it deep, his 37th homer of the year, and they add a pair. It's 2-0. Good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. So one out, nobody on. So digging in now for Philadelphia, Bryce Harper. Another solid power season. That one to first, and he handles it himself for the out. The left fielder, number 80, Nick. Ready to go, bottom four. Here's some real power at the plate. Pete Alonso, he's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. In for a strike. It's 0-1. The next pitch misses, and now it's even one and one. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And a pitch. Stays alive. Right-hander kicks, deals. Tapped in front of the plate. Tosses to first. One out in the bottom of the fourth. The the left field. One. one out, base is empty. Here's the center fielder, Mickey Moniak. On the ground, right side. Steps on first for the out. Good fade and sinking action of that changeup. Got that hitter to roll over. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. Gibson back to work. Swings and misses at the pitch off the plate. Fooled on that pitch, got a little anxious. Comes up empty on the swing, 0-2 now. I'll tell you this, that's going to go on that pitcher's highlight reel. And 1-2. One one hey, drive that pitch, huh? Here you go. 
That one misses in the dirt. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2-2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. Down in order go the Mets. And this game is still tied at 2-2. Two and two. We go to the top of the seventh. Now the left fielder, Nick Castellanos. He's a big, strong guy. Can untie this game with one swing. Puts a bunt down right side. Alonso. Close play, but he just beat him to the bag for the out. Well, I'm pretty sure he took a look around the infield to see where they were playing before laying that one down. And everyone is playing back. You assume that's going to be a pretty easy knock. Here's Pete Alonso. Put that 600 slugging into context. The league average usually in the low 400s. The pitch. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Looking for some insurance. Or as our friends down in the South would say. Insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you mean. Next offering is in for a strike. Next offering is foul back. Marte at second. Lindor over at first with one away. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Here comes a pitch. And a swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Well, you see him trying to pull that inside pitch right there, and that's not the kind of approach that you want to have. Even if you do get to it, it's going to be very difficult to keep it fair. You're just going to make it a long strike at best. You have to be able to stay within the baseball on the inside of that path to it. One thing I want to note, a nugget, if you will, Chris. Pete Alonso only had the one hit, but it left the yard. Always a confidence booster when a guy takes one deep, gets to jog around the bases, and not a multi-hit game or anything like that, but he did make an impact on this one, and I think that's all you can really hope for with each and every contest. Back at Truist Park, John Chambi alongside Chris Singleton. Thanks for joining us. We're in the seventh with nobody out. And now, Jeff McNeil. A strikeout and a walk. Batter number one, second baseman, Jeff McNeil. And a pitch. And a ground ball to first. And he takes it himself for the out. James McCann in now. You know, back to work. That just misses, and it's one to no. know. Movement in the Atlanta bullpen. Colin McHugh getting ready to come in for manager Brian Snicker. Smith, a left hander, also throwing. Next pitch is outside. When you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up, and that's what he's been doing. It's made a big impact for him in recent games. And a base hit on a line. That skips over the fence, so it's an automatic double. Well, there's something really nice about getting yourself an automatic double like that. You get to stroll into second base without having to worry about a throw or getting your uniform dirty. And now you're just looking for the next guy to kind of do the same thing. Maybe put one in the gap so you can jog home as well. Here comes the manager out of the Braves dugout, and he will make a move to the pen. Waskari Noah won't go any further tonight. And he's responsible for the runner on second, so the book isn't closed on him yet. We'll be right back. Tyler Matzik will take over on the mound, trying to protect this lead. So the lineup flips over. Here's Brandon Nimmo. 
And he deals. That pitch in for a strike. And that is strike one. And now the lefty slider clips the zone. Slider misses outside. Runner at second here, one gone. And fouled off. In the dirt, but kept close. Nice job behind the plate there. So the tying run at second. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. Now two away. Here's Starling Marte. Marte. And a pitch. And a swing and a miss. This is one of those situations where the pitcher may not really want to deal with the guy in the box. And you got to be aware of that. Take your walk. I could do it, but I think he can. In the dirt. Nothing doing. Count moves to one and one. Runner edges away at second. And that one missing low. McCann on its second with two down. Next pitch is outside. This doesn't seem to want to throw him a fastball. Three swing and a miss. Now three and two. Comes up empty as he chases that one in the dirt. Got it. Inning over on the strikeout. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. And welcome back. Here's Eddie Rosario. Well, they kept it pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come, but you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against it. In the air, right field, pretty well struck, pretty well struck. Feeling for the wall as he makes the catch. Well, I think the wind ended up being a factor Number right there. Number it's 20. whipping in from right field First right down. now. So otherwise, I think that falls out of here. Here's Marcelo Zuna. And here it comes. And there's the strike. Oh, one's the count. Ripped to short, into the outfield, base hit. Multi-hit game for him now, and with the lack of results he's been having lately, I'm sure he's feeling some relief. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield, and even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Here's Manny Pena. Pitch misses inside, and that's ball one. Next offering is in for a strike. Cracks his bat and pops him off. They get the tag on him, and that's the second out. Ozzie Albies up to the plate. The pitch. There's the strike. They always say it's the best pitch in baseball. Strike one. You get ahead on a good hitter as well. He's a little bit more confidence to move through the at bat. That one hammered, but pulled foul. Runner leads away at second. Stays alive. Man on second, two down. And a pop up right side, foul territory. Alonso makes the catch, and that'll do it. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Braves four and the Mets three.
Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Colin McHugh. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Back here in Atlanta, stepping in is the switch hitting shortstop, Francisco Lindor. Well, both sides equally as strong. So not a good time to try to turn him around with a relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. You'll want. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, the catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Oh, that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit-by-pitch to lead off the inning. Well, that definitely gives this offense some hope right here. Tying run on base. So we'll see if they can find a way to bring him around. The pitch. Alonso batting now as that one almost finds the mark. It's a ball. Next offering is in for a strike. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base. Try to stay out of a double play here. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes and one away. Now it's J.D. Davis. Well, definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. In there and it's 0-1. Lindor leads off first with one away. The next offering misses. And it's a ball and a strike. Right-handed reliever. And another ball. And now it's even up. Knowing that the pitcher wants a ground ball double play opportunity here, you've got to lay off pitches down in the zone. Right there, swinging at that pitch, that's a no-no. Throw to first. Lindor back easily. Kicks and fires. And that one almost got him. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Lindor the move. Cut on and missed. Well, almost a strike him out, throw him out play right there, but 3 2 is a great count to run on. There's a good chance the hitter puts the ball in play, so it can turn into a big play offensively as well. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. This is what stat nerds like myself might call. A high leverage situation. Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Runner at second, two down. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. Runner around third on his way to the plate. He'll score, and the Mets even it up. It's four to four. Well, we're starting over again, all tied up. Everyone's trying to elevate the ball in today's game, but if you can hit a ball that hard on the ground, it's going to find some holes. Now it's Dominic Smith. The pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Next offering is in for a strike. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spin on anything that's down. Next offering is foul back. Tied to four. That one ripped. He's got it. And that is out number three. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now tied 4-4. One, one, two, one, two. That was the zip code. December 27 was the birth of Kanada, the Met fan. Born in the home of the Dodgers. D. Strawberry was the man as a toddler from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, look, Holmes, I'm from the. Welcome back. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. Dansby Swanson stands in. Swanson, former first-round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Vanderbilt player in college, College World Series player, all that good stuff. But really coming into his own. Pitch. 
That one drilled left field. And it's gone! Dansby Swanson blasts one out. His second home run of the game, and that gives him a lead. It's 5-4. Singy, the ball is jumping off his back. Yes, it is. Tons of loud contact. Man, it's been impressive. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Here's Matt Olson. The batter, the first baseman. In there for strike one. But he's got to delete it. You give up that leadoff home run, go back to work, focus on this next batter. Hard hit left side. Toss to Alonzo. They go 5-3 for the first out as the third baseman makes the play from the shortstop spot in the shift. The right hander back to work. On the ground to first. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. To the pitcher covering, but it's off target. They can't make the play. Well, you can't give him two errors on that play, but that's pretty much what it looked like. Tried to stay with it after the bobble, and... He might have pulled it off with a good throw, but it's very easy to rush the throw when you don't build it cleanly. A lot of times, guys don't have a good grip on it, and I think that was the case right there. Now it's Alex Dickerson. The right-hander back to work. And downstairs. There's a strike. Definitely not a pitch location you're expecting up there as a hitter. Run around the goal. Next pitch is popped up. Alonso under it. Snags it for the second out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good now timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. And at first, and next for Atlanta, Adam Duvall. And the pitch. Going one. He must have been looking for something else because he gave up on that pitch a little early. It was right down Main Street. Probably not going to see a better pitch to hit in this at bat. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. Last chance coming up here for the Mets. Going, going, yeah, we in go mode. Here comes A.J. Minter to the mound, and he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. We go to the ninth, and stepping in for New York, Jeff McNeil. So important to stay within yourself, especially for this hitter. Not known to be a power guy or a home run hitter. He needs to set the table by getting on with a walk or a base hit. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side. Same side he throws from. Next offering is in for a strike. All right, now, he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. Oh, that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit by pitch to lead off the inning. You just can't afford to make these kind of mistakes this late in the ball game. You need to make the offense earn everything down the stretch, and that right there was just a freebie. Here comes a pitch. McCann stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. The lefty, the 1 0. McCann fouls one off. All season long, he's racked up a number of saves, and sometimes the adrenaline doesn't get high enough until there's a runner or two on base. In the air, right field. Rosario makes the grab, and there's one away. Back to the top of the Mets order, and stepping in is the speedy Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Next pitch is outside. Two zero. -oh. Ooh. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. 
kicks and deals. And now just two outs away. Well, on this count, runner not known for his speed, but I think you got to put him in motion. Try to avoid a double play here, Booth. Hard ground ball, base knock. It's off his shoulder, eats him up. But no throw, and they'll have runners at the corners with one out. Throw comes in quickly, and the tying run forced to hold on at third with one away. Starling Marte up to him. Minter back to work. Foul ball. In the infield at the corners. Don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Pickoff throw. Nimmo back in standing. The 0 1. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Field two. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. Moved to first. Nimmo gets back easily. Here's the 0-2. And a foul ball. He stays alive. One out. The possible tying and go-ahead runs on base. Next offering is foul back. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. That misses. Now one and two. This guy's a fun guy to watch taking it bad. He just battles up there. He doesn't take a pitch off at all. Makes it so difficult on the pitchers out there. You can tell they get frustrated with how long it takes to put him away. And he deals. And a swing and a miss. Now two out. Good late cut for the strikeout there. That thing really got in on him, man. You no, know, the cutter isn't really a huge swing and miss pitch most of the time because it's not really meant to move a whole lot. You're just trying to miss the big part of the barrel and maybe get some weak contact, but that one right there did a whole lot more than that. That was a really good pitch. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Well, they're applying pressure, quality at bats, quality swings right now, and see this offense doing it one man to the next showing a lot of fight right now and they're making it difficult for the back end of this bullpen to close out this game this ball's chopped in the ground and that is the ball game Thank mm -hmm. you. 